Okay, so now that we've got the base all installed, it's it's time to work on the wiring. Now, typically, what you would do is cut into your harness and splice these in. I've never been a big fan of that. Splices fail. I suppose not if you solder them, but no matter what, the wiring of the vehicle is is forever altered. Now, with this radio, what's happened is the CD player has died. So, I don't need it anymore, and my thought was, if I open it up and remove the plugs, then I can attach my wires to those plugs in their proper order, and then I simply plug it into the truck's existing wiring harness. Nothing has been cut. Nothing has been modified. So that's what we're going to do today. First step, of course, is get it open and get to the plugs. Now I've got the, the plug out of the back. The wiring schematic that came with the radio is a touch ambiguous. I actually got my meter out and I, I ran through the various accessories on the truck just to make sure I knew what they were. It was more of a matter of figuring out is this the black one, as you can see the black one there, or is this the gray one. The input connection is the gray one. So once I've identified that by tracking down which one's the battery and then accessory. An accessory was easy. You, you put your meter on it and the key is off. It should be dead. You put the key into accessory and it should come live, and it did. And then I double check that again with the illumination. With the headlights off, everything should be dead, and it was. And then when I put the headlights on, that should light up, and it did. So then, once I noticed, once I knew what that was, then I've been able to figure out uh, what goes where. So what I will do is I will snip them all off, strip them, and I'll actually attach back here. So with the new radio schematic out, we're going to know that our first wire is the front left speaker. So it's white with a black stripe. So from our bundle we track down the two of those and then we find the corresponding from the old radio and simply attach them. So working with our first speaker I know that white with a black stripe is left front negative. So I find that a corresponding plug that left front negative is the second wire up from the bulge at the bottom of the connector. So this is the corresponding left negative wire. Splice the two of those together like that. Remember, if you're going to use heat shrink, it does have to go on first. Using my old beat up third hand, apply a little solder, wait for it to wick in. And so there we go. First connection, I used the barrel of the soldering iron to shrink the tubing. It works as well as anything else. The next one we need to connect is the front left positive speaker which is the white wire. So the positive front left same basic procedure except I know that this wire is going to be found on the other black plug. It's a little weird that they got two negatives on one plug and the rest of them over there. But right here left front positive so that corresponds with my schematic so I know that the white wire is going to connect. So you can see a line up of the, the bulge there. I know it's going to connect fourth one down. So the fourth wire over, this one, is the left front positive. All right, so the next one in the schematic is the right front speaker. And I know that, that is, the negative of that is gray with a black stripe. And the positive of that is gray. I have it scattered over two separate plugs, but that's just the sort of weird way that the, this radio happens to be wired. We're going to make every effort possible to keep all of our wires straight. If you're having a hard time, you can always use a little bit of masking tape and a permanent marker and just write right on the tape, which, which they actually are. The soldering procedure pretty much remains the same for all of them. A little solder, wait for it to wick. You don't want to leave it on there too long. The actual sucking is Pretty much unnecessary, but it's just something I like to do. You don't need to worry about that. Then you take it loose, fold the wires over, slip your heat shrink up, and shrink it. Anybody can learn how to do this. Soldering irons are relatively cheap. You're going to use it later anyways. There you go. Another connection. Now the JVC has the ground wire included uh, in amongst the plugs. The old Dodge radio did not be connected to the chassis. So all I'm going to do is put a lug on this and then attach it where the old Dodge ground wire used to attach. Alright, so on the JVC schematic 
they have yellow and they just say they want it going to a live terminal in the fuse box. This would be a non-switched 12 volt all the time. Uh, the purpose of that would be to maintain your radio stations, time, things like that. Uh, it's a pretty low power draw. Now, you know, on the old Dodge radio, they just call that BAT. It just means battery. And I already know from my original testing that this, in fact, is the terminal that is hot all the time. The last important connection is the accessory connection and it's usually abbreviated ACC and what accessory is you turn your key backwards other than direction of starting just so you can run your radio things like that inside the vehicle with the engine off this just simply connects the two of them and so there it is I, I'm well aware that it's a touch weedy but let's face it you're not gonna see it more importantly in my mind you have not damaged the truck's wiring. You have not cut into anything factory. You're going to plug these in, and they're going to work. When you're doing this, a couple of hints. When you're all said and done, go back with your schematics and double check. Even being careful, I found out that I reversed right rear and left rear negative, which would have resulted in some problems. The other thing you might notice is I got a couple of extra... Well, I have something called park. I'm not sure what it does. I'd have to look it up. I also have uh, ILL, which is illumination. Now, illumination it used to light the radio up. A lot of these modern radios, especially the cheap ones, and this JVC is pretty much the cheapest I could find that had an auxiliary input, they don't really light up with the headlights anymore. They light up all the time. So it's very possible that you are not going to have an individual illumination plug. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to put a little piece of tape I'm going to write on it, illumination. On the other one, I'm going to put a little piece of tape, and I'm going to write on it, park, uh, along with mute, which uh, I believe kills the radio when you're using hands-free uh, uh, cell phones. I don't have mute, and uh, I don't have a power antenna. So there will actually be four lines that are not connected. But once again, my recommendation, label them, fold them over, and pin them down, either with a little bit of shrink tube, or a little bit of tape but pin them down so they can't short out and just leave them in there and if you ever need them you'll have them they'll be labeled and you can connect right to it while I'm not using the illumination wire because the new radio itself doesn't have that particular option that illumination wire if I was so inclined to have a light up radio surround you could easily tap into that terminal and it would supply voltage for that only when your headlights were on. Very simple, very slick, very clean application uh, if you had interior lighting and wanted to tie into it and you have one of these, these plugs in the back. It's already all done for you. Once again, you're not fishing wires through the dash and you're not messing with factory connections. Back in the truck again now. Uh, the wire's hooked up. That's the wires that'll go to the new JVC and these are tied back into the original factory harness. If there's a way to do this without cutting into your factory harness, boy, I sure do recommend that. However, you could have done the same procedure, and instead of splicing to the back side of these clips, you could have simply spliced to these wires. You'd have had to done it inside the car, and it's not something that can be easily undone. But then again, when you figure I ripped these plugs out of the back of the radio, it's not like I could undo that either. It's all installed back in the truck, all I need to do now is put the dash trim back on, get the radio close, plug in the wires. There's my antenna wire right there, and fire her up. And there's the finished installation. Nice, clean, uh, easy look. Wasn't all that hard. Anyone can do it. I mean, let's face it, we just took essentially the cheapest radio Best Buy had with an auxiliary port and, and put it in... Uh, a nice mount it, it, it went it went quite well it's certainly something that you could do on your own I say go for it as long as you're not hacking into the cars wiring what do you really got to lose give it a try